good. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to speak about the difference between 21 days fasting and prayers and 21 days Daniel's fast. There are two dif different fasts here. When we talk about 21 days fasting and prayers, is the normal fasting where there is no di dietary restrictions, where you have no restrictions on what to eat and what not to eat. Let's say, for example, you, you decide to break your fast today. You are not restricted to whatever you need to eat. You just eat anything you desire to eat for, for to, okay. You desire anything you desire to break your fast, right? The normal 21 days fast, you don't have to avoid certain foods. You can live your normal life. Just pray. Cindy, don't feel frustrated. That is a plan of the devil to distract you. That's a sign of distraction. You've come too far. Just read the word. Whenever you feel that way, read the word of God and pray, right? So let, let me just go back into this. The Daniel's fasting, when you break your fast, is strictly fruits and vegetables. You cannot mix anything. You cannot have salt, sugar, any preservative, any... Um, any uh, artificial flavor, nothing. That is purely veg vegetables and fruits. Whereas when you're doing your ordinary uh, ordinary 21 days fast, at the end of your fast, if it's six o'clock, you want to break your fast, you can eat whatever you desire. That's a normal 21 days fasting and prayers. Just like you're fasting for three days, but this time you're doing it for 21 days. There's no dietary needs. There's no dietary restrictions. Eat as much and anything you so desire, right? Because I'm getting emails. People are confused about it too. There is a clear difference. One, you eat whatever you want. And the other, which is Daniel's fast, you cannot eat whatever you want. You have to eat just fruit and vegetables and water for 21 days. So I understand where people are confused. I understand where people don't know exactly which one to go for, right? So please just take notes. The, uh, the normal 20, 21 days fasting and prayers, at the end of your fast, you can eat your meat, your grill, your taco, your pizza, your macaroni and cheese, your spaghetti, your jollof rice, your fufu, your banku, your egusi, whatever you desire to eat, you can eat it. But when it comes to the Daniel's fat, sorry, Daniel's fasting, I'm sorry, you can't eat that way. This one is making noise. Let me take it off. When it comes to Daniel's fast, Oh, I look ugly. Let me put it back on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there was a difference when I take it on. <laughs> when it comes to Daniel's fast, you do not have to eat anything you desire. It's just discipline. That is solely fruit and vegetables. When you wake up in the morning, you don't eat till the time you, de you decide to break your fast. Then you eat your fruits and vegetables. I'm telling you for a fact, it's so challenging. It's so difficult. You have to be determined. You have to be strong-willed. You have to be wicked in the head that I'm doing this. I, I know. For so When somebody is discouraged, I know exactly what they're going to because I, I know how difficult it is to do a pure Daniel's fast with no salt, with no sugar, with no spice. Some of we people of color that we love flavor. We love spice. We love the kick when you're eating. You need to feel something in the food. But 21 days, you cannot have that. So I understand how difficult it is. So if anyone is complaining, I will just have to encourage you. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Just like labor. It's uh, Sorry, pregnancy. When you're, you're pregnant, until nine months, you cannot give up. You have to push to the end of nine months till you have the baby. And the baby is going to be the reward. So push through this and you make it. So for those of you who are getting confused about the 21 days Daniel's fasting and the 21 days fasting and prayers, the only difference is the Daniel's fast at the end of your fast or at the end of your fasting for the day, you are only allowed to eat fruits and vegetables. Whereas the 21 days fasting and prayers, 
at the end of your fast, you can eat whatever you desire. There are no dietary need, no dietary restrictions. Eat whatever you want. You can eat meat, fish, suya, whatever. Whatever you desire, you can eat it. Okay? You can eat it. Okay, now let me take some questions. Praise the Lord. Davis. Okay, let, let me just appreciate my people. Let me just show respect to my people. Hello, Davis. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Carl. Hello, Hess H. Guys, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I appreciate you all so much. Listen, I pray that this fast that you're doing, I know how difficult it is. God will reward you every time. God will reward you. I know your testimonies are coming. Your toast. Those of you are already... <laughs> you feel like eating Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> my dear don't eat chinese please your reward is bigger than chinese whatever is coming is more valuable than chinese okay your testimony cannot be swapped for chinese chinese is always there we will eat as many as we want if you like i go to soho order as many as you want just go to chinatown you can have better chinese they're not the ones they sell in our neighborhoods this useless chinese shops in our neighborhood no go to chinatown or soho you get classic one there very good tasty Okay, so please keep pushing, guys. I do appreciate you all. Okay, um, so if anybody's got a question, please put it out. Let me answer it quickly, then I can run off. I hope you guys are doing well, though. For those of you who are not commenting, you are doing well, you are pushing through the fast. Okay, you know, Daniel never gave up when you read the book of Daniel, chapter 10, he, he never gave up. The Bible says he did not anoint his head with oil. He did not drink wine. He did not eat meat. It's, it's, you're going to be fine. Just keep pushing, my, my dear. Keep pushing. When you feel that way, just take a, uh, your Bible, read a word and pray. Just keep praying. Keep, keep praying. Keep praying. Call upon God to give you strength. Like, ask God strength. He's the only one that can give us strength. Give us strength. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, Kay, thank you for joining the live stream. You had headache. If you have headache, my dear, drink water. Drink water. Don't drink like this is warm. I've got warm water in this mug. I just sip it and buy because it's cold here in the UK. It's freezing cold. So I just I've always got this mug without this one, any mug around, fill it with warm water. If you feel cold, just Okay, if you have headache, just drink some water. Hydrate yourself. Hydrate yourself. Don't, don't just fight you the headache with nothing. Just drink water, okay? I don't think water is going to do any harm to you, but rather do you good, okay? Let's push to, I know it's difficult, trust me. Even, even when you want to be a professional, Lisa, can I do a dry fast? I used to be a champion of dry fast, but sadly I stopped because of kidney problem. Apparently, I'm putting so much stress on my kidney. So please, you can do your fast, but don't do it dry. Just sip water. From time to time, you have a little bit of water. From time to time, you have a bit of water. I used to do dry fast like there's no tomorrow. I'll do it on stuff. Three days, nothing, and I'm good. But now, because of I think because of my age, it's not, it's not, my body is not taking it so well. So I've been drinking water whenever I'm fasting. But I would advise you not to do dry because later when it might affect you in life okay um i think i was just doubting the doubting the fast anyone feel the same don't doubt yourself babe don't doubt yourself doubt even the moment you doubt then it means your faith is, is so little like i said to you i said i have you and i have got a challenge i asked you to read matthew the book of matthew from chapter 1 to chapter 28 just to see what god is all uh, christ is all about you see things that christ did there so Please don't forget, do it. Just continue reading it. Continue reading it. Okay. Um, Carl says, I still had bad dreams. Like I see my self back in the primary school. That's a spirit of setback. I feel discouraged. And how can I go through that? We ask the power of God to rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Remember now you are a child in Christ Jesus and the old things have passed away. You cannot be in the present and be seeing your past. That is the spirit of setback, setback, setback. We stand upon the name of Jesus and we rebuke that power. We rebuke that power. Whilst you are in your fast, my dear cow, be praying against the spirit of setback. 
pray against it in the name of Jesus. This is the best time to overcome that spirit, the best time to rebuke them. Just pronounce yourself, dec declare to yourself that forward ever, backwards never. Forward ever, backwards never. You can't be in the, the present, be in the, no, whatever is there is done. You have no connection with that, that part of your life anymore. That part of your life is gone and is dusted. You're no more there. You would never go back there again. You are moving forward. We are marching forward to our victory, to our greater opportunities, greater um, 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 pedestal. We can't be looking at, at our, our past in the present life. Me too, I dream I was at my university. I finished years ago. Oh, God. You can't, you can't be doing that, my dear. Keep praying. Whenever you pray, any ancestral bondage, those things are normally familiar spirits, spirits that are connected to us, familiar spirits, bloodline, demonic bondages. So whenever you wake up, you rebuke it with the blood of Jesus. Pronounce it to that spirit that now you are in Christ. You move forward in Christ. In Christ, there is prosperity. In Christ, there is victory. In Christ, there is salvation. You cannot be in the past. So whenever you, you wake up, you see that dream, use the blood of Jesus. In the spiritual world, they are so scared of the blood of Jesus. So use the blood of Jesus to rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Guys, just do that. Do that. I used to have that, that kind of dream a lot, but whenever I, I wake up, I say, hey, no way. Listen, whatever we have doing, it was not my consent anyway. I did not consent to any blood sacrifice. I did not consent to any rituals. So therefore, I am a grown woman. I make my decision. I know who, who I am now. I know who I am believing in now. I know who I am following now. I know whose grace is upon my life now. So your powers have got no authority, have got no control over me. If you see me praying, you think I'm fighting. You think I'm fighting? I don't want it. Listen, I did not consent to it. When they were doing the blood sacrifice, calling evil demonic spirit to, do, to bring family spirit, family protection, I wasn't there. So I can't be consenting or working with something that I, I, I'm not involved in. Say I am different. I cut that root. Me and my generation, my household, my bloodline, we are no longer involved in those things. So the good thing is, God is revealing to you in a dream. So you work with it. Some people don't even dream at all. They don't dream. And things are going on around them and they'll be there. They know nothing and things are not moving for them. They don't know what to do. They are frustrated. They are trying every single thing and nothing in work is working for them. Only to know that they are ancestral spirit, demonic spirit that are working against them. But because they don't have the knowledge, God, okay, not that they don't have the knowledge, Demonic spirits are oppressing them so much that they can't see any revelation, any dream that they have to work with. So your dreams are very important. When you're, you are fasting, your dreams are super important. They are revelation. They are a way that God is revealing things to you for you to pray for it or pray against it. See? So those, those are the things I'm going to say today. Guys, I don't want the video to be long. It's 30 minutes already. If you don't have anything else to ask, can we just pray? And um, we call it a night, right? Um, I think that's it for tonight. I don't have, just let's, let's, let's just to recap, those of you who just joined, I was just explaining the, the difference between Daniel's 21 days fast and the normal 21 days fasting and prayers, okay? The normal 21 days fasting is when you fast for 21 days, and at the end of each day, when you break your fast, you can eat whatsoever food you desire. Any food at all you want to eat, you can eat it when you break your fast. Whereas when you're doing the Daniel's fast, you cannot eat anything and everything you, are do, you, are, you desire or anything you want to eat. Because when you read the book of Daniel chapter 10, chapter 2, no, Daniel chapter 2, verse Oh God, I'm mixing it up. Genesis chapter 10, verses two to three. It says, Daniel did not eat meat or fish. He ate just fruit and vegetables for three whole weeks. So when you are doing Daniel's fast, you also have to abide by solely eating fruit and vegetables for three weeks, which is 21 days. But if you're doing a normal fast for 21 days, at the end of your fast, you can eat whatever you want. Tacos, spaghetti, mac and cheese, grilled chicken, lamb, lamb chops, Whatever you want to eat, you can eat it. 
That is the only difference. One, you can eat whatever you want to eat, which is the 21 days fasting and prayers. And the Daniel's 21 days fast, you cannot eat whatsoever you, you want to eat. That's solely vegetarian, solely fruits and vegetables. Okay? Right. Um, so if there's no more question, thank you so much. God bless you all for us here and hear our prayers. Okay, guys, I want to pray. Pray for those of you who are um going through financial difficulties. I want to pray for people who are in need. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, at this hour, we come before you because you said where two or more people are gathered in your midst. Father, you are you are there with them. Father, at this moment, we are doing a corporate fast, Lord. In this fast, we are doing a Daniel's fast, which Daniel called when he needed you so much. Father, I, I use this opportunity to pray for people who need financial help. Father, make a way for them, oh God. Father, you can do anything and everything. As you said in Ephesians 3, chapter 20, our God does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he, we could ever ask or think of. Father, let your grace fall upon them, oh God. But I make provision for them. But I make provision for them because you are the God. You supply all our needs according to your riches in the glory of Jesus Christ. Father, not about our, uh, our oh Lord Jesus. Father, you say you supply all our needs, oh God, according to the riches in the glory of Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, you have all riches in abundance. Father, let their helpers locate them. Father, make a way where the sins to win away. Unexpected miracles, let it fall upon them. But I let breaks to locate them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I give you all praise. And I know you've answered this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you. I give you all praise in Jesus' mighty name, O oh God. Amen and amen. Right. Um, general, uh, hey, look at the way I'm speaking like <laughs> generational cases. I think I have a video on that already. Okay, I will do a video then. I will do a video there. If you want that as a better explanation, I think I, ha I have done a video on generational cases, those idols our forefathers brought into our family, and it's now something that is tormenting generations upon generations that you know some people are just suffering in vain. But what breaks my heart is on the internet, you see people selling protection, charms. And I said, oh my God, you don't know what you are getting yourself into. What your forefathers did, you are not out of it yet. You've not delivered yourself out of it yet. You are now going to put yourself in new age demonic spirit. Spirit that this once, the charms that you're buying off internet and stuff, they are even more wicked than, your, than what your forefathers did that you cannot even come out of. You are just putting yourself into severe bondage. When I see people say, oh, I bought this from the internet, it's for charms, it's for protection. I say, you don't know what you just done. If you know, you will throw this thing, you will even burn it and start praying. Pray for the rest of your life. Don't eat for the rest of your life. Start praying for the rest of your life. Okay? Also, one. Yes. Now, the thing now is people go to do um, that thing, love covenant. They go to do soul tie. Oh, my God. Guys, please stay away from those things. Those charms for, to get a man, charms to get a woman, those soul tie things oh, to, for us to be together. My dear, if it's not from God, it will break up. Those charms, it will break up. You're just putting yourself into bondages. And your innocent children, that's what breaks my heart. Your innocent children will be victim of your stupidity. Yes. Yes, yes. That's the, that's the fact. Sometimes we Christians, we eat carelessly. And I'm going to tell you for a fact, right? When I was growing up, you see... I rebelled very young age because I think the power of God was with me. God had, was anointed, was with me even when I was younger. I rebelled. There was something that occasionally in my home, the family home that I raised, they would kill a lamb, right? When they cut off the, uh, they slaughter the lamb. Okay, let me use the right terminology. When they slaughter a lamb, they pour out the blood, they use it for a stew or something, and they give it to everybody to eat in the house. You eat it with rice, you eat it with banku, you eat it with... I think when I got to age... Um, 12, 13. I said, I'm not eating this thing anymore. I rebel. I said, I'm not eating this thing anymore. 
So for my, from my childhood, I started getting beaten because when they are doing things, I said, I'm not doing it. Then I start beating me because I didn't live with my mom, with my dad. I was living with my father's family and beatings because I was stubborn. I will rebel. I said, I'm not eating this. This thing is not from God. I'm not eating it. And I get beatings. Uh, they had that in Kenya too, right? I, I, I was, they were eating that. And it, it got to a point, my baby sister, the, my sister right after me, she is super soft. Even up to date as I speak, she will never rebel against authority. My sister will never rebel against anything. Me, I will rebel. And I, one day they gave her the food. I said, you're not eating this food. I took it from her and I smashed it on the floor. And I remember my uncle beat me up proper. Just because I took that food off my sister. I said, you know, this thing is not from God, you know. This is juju food. This thing is juju food that you're eating. You're eating food dedicated to idols. I took it off my sister and I chucked it and I was beaten for it. And next I told her, that, you next time they give you that food again and eat it. You see what I'll do to you? Because she was so soft, I could control her. And when I want her, I said, for any time they give her the food, watch me. What I do, you follow. You don't eat anything they give you. And she wouldn't say a word. And she, whenever we give the food, oh, I'll behave like, oh, I'm going to eat it. When I go to the back of the house, I'll just chuck it there and bring the, I'll stay there for a while. I thought they'll know that I've not eaten it. I'll stay there for a while. Then I'll come back with an empty plate. And I'll say, don't follow me. Go to the other side. So I have to strategize a way that she also stop eating the food. Because I got to know, I think, like I keep saying that God has got a purpose for me many, many years, way before I, I, I became even a, 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 an adult. Because my rebellion was for a reason. Because when I look back, I could tell you, I'm not doing this. This thing is not from God. I'm not doing it. This is from the devil. I could tell you, and I'm not afraid of you. I would say it. And so that same charisma, all my, okay, I'll say two. One of my daughters is very, very quiet. She will never challenge authority. I've got three daughters. One is quiet. Two of them, they will challenge authority. When you ask them to say, why? explain to me. They don't take any nonsense from anybody. If you don't explain, it doesn't make sense to them. Their mother told them not to do it. They won't do it. So this is where parental guidance come in. If you leave your children with anybody and everybody, they start initiating your children to any this kind of demanding things. And later in life, you, the parent, have to be dealing with these things. Right. I think I'm talking too much. Let's, let's end it here. Um... Okay, Faith, you got the answers. That's very good. At least you, you benefited from this video. Now the two is the 21 days fasting prayers. After the end of the fast, you can eat whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to eat, just eat it. But with the Daniel's fast, it's strictly fruit and vegetable. Okay? Right. Okay, new age faith. Okay, I'll, I'll make a video about that because I know I see a lot of people, they put things on their wrist. When, oh, I got it from Thailand. It's, it's powers for protection. You go on holiday for just two weeks, you go get talisman. You go get a, a bracelet and tell me it's for protection. Hey, God. God is suffering, you know, guys. God, God is suffering so much. You go to Thailand. You go to um, um, somewhere in Asia, you come back with a talisman and tell me it's for protection. That's new. You're going to bring demons into your life and your life will be worse than before. Your life will be worse than before. RNA, RNA, welcome to the channel. Welcome, welcome for joining the live stream. I appreciate you, right? So we should be very careful that we should, we should be very careful that we don't follow the crowd wrongly. People are doing things. You need to understand why are they doing it? What is the spiritual implication after many years to come? Would it have any spiritual imp a, a negative impartation against my life? You need to know. Don't just do things where people are doing it. Don't do things because people are doing it. It's your life here. It's your future innocent children who are going to suffer for it. <sighs> Yes, if it's not in the Bible, don't do it. That's it. Jenny, thank you very much for saying that. If it's not in the Bible, please keep walking. If it's not in the Bible, keep walking. Yes, people following culture um, blindly. And now the thing is, if you go to, if you, and now, okay, I don't want to talk about tattoos right now. Because tattoos, you have no idea. People draw snake. Draw, you know, every animal has got a spirit behind them. Every animal has got a spirit behind them. 
You don't now if you ah, listen, okay. And what breaks my heart, like you see people in ministry, people in ministry that the book of Leviticus um, uh, chapter is it 28? It speaks about tattoo. You see Ghan, uh, Ghanaians. Hey, my dear, let's leave that one for another. Ghanaians and tattoo now. It breaks my heart a lot. Ghanaians and tattoo now. If I say now, they'll come for my neck. So let me just drop it. You see, you, every animal has got a spirit. You tattoo yourself. And you see people holding microphones, singing to glorify God. And you see tattoos. And I say, God. Okay, I'm not going to judge. See? I'm not going to judge. Yes. I know a pastor who, who, who I saw her on social media with a, a tattoo, and I was shocked. I said, wow, I used to honor you, miss, but seeing this tattoo boldly on your arm here, I pass. Because I don't know what's going on. If you did it before you came to Christ, if you did it before you confessed Christ, if you did it before you, you, you became a strong Christian, then Fine, I accept it. I respect that. But you can't be serving God and be tattooing yourself all over. And recently I read that it didn't destroy your lymph nodes, which causes cancer. Ah. Guys, let's leave it. It's 26 minutes. Let me allow you to go to sleep. Guys, please, for those of you here that you've not liked the video, please do like the video and share it on, okay? And um, tomorrow is day 12. Oh, God, I thank you. Day 12. So we're going to calm down. We're going to calm down now. Calm down process. Guys, God will answer our prayers. And don't worry. God will see us too. God doesn't lie. Nobody does things for God and they fail. And for those of you who can, who can give somebody food, please, whilst you are fasting, please give somebody some food. Give somebody some food. Please bless people with food. Bless people with food. If you can help anybody that is hungry, if you can help anybody that is needy, my dear, what you think five pounds cannot do anything for you? Because if I give five pounds to my children, now they, you won't get them anything. But that five pounds can help somebody, can give somebody, somebody something to eat, change something for someone when you give that person a five pounds or even two pounds or a pound or something, right? And um, I think a few weeks ago, I went to um, my local Tesco's with my youngest daughter. We just walked there. And when we were about to enter the shop, I saw this young man there say, mom, can you get me something to eat? I said, follow me. He said, no, if I come there, they will chase me out. And I said, okay, this guy, he's going to start recording the shop. He's been doing naughty stuff. So I think they banned him from entering the shop. And I asked him, what do you want? How can you give money to someone who, who is facing financial difficulties? Yeah, you just say, oh, can I bless you? If, if you, you can decide not to give them raw cash, buy them food, go to Asda, go to, see, I'm doing free adverts for Asda because Asda is my grocery store. That's where I buy almost everything. Go to Morrison's, go to Tesco's, see, free advert. You people, you pay later on. Go to any grocery store at all, buy some few things, any essential things, and just give it to the person. Say, so, oh, I went to the shop and I, 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 I was touched by getting you something. Buy them chicken, buy them lamb chops, minced meat, things that you know that it can cook a meal. You can even make a meal shopping. Like you buy spaghetti, buy uh, minced meat, you buy onions, you buy oil, you buy vegetables, uh, bell pepper. Make sure you have everything that can make a meal. So I came to bless you with this. Okay? So bless them like that. And God, God will have mercy on you. See, that's all Christianity is all about, you know. In the in the, um, in the Catholic Church, that's what they preach. Although it's the Orthodox, people don't agree with what their values are, but they have some good preaching there. Loving one another, taking care of one another. That's what pleases God. You give to people who are in need, give to the homeless. Oh, homeless. Especially the females. I don't know how they are homeless. How can it be a female? You know, female, you need a bathroom twice a day. You need to shower before you get out of the house. You need to shower before you go back to sleep. And they don't have those facilities. I don't know how. They... <laughs> but yeah, it's sad. It breaks my heart, but there's only much I can do. 
there's only much I can do. So whatever you want to do to help somebody, please, I encourage you to do. I encourage you to do, right? You don't have to be a billionaire before you start giving to people. You may give this, this, this bag of banana to somebody, and that is where God is, through that, God is going to bless you with it, right? God is going to bless, just bless somebody with just banana. God is going to bless you. Okay, you don't have to do it in abundance. The little you have, so long as you, you did it from your heart, it's, it's pure heart given. God will bless you. God will bless you. And you, you'll be wondering, why am I having life so easy? People go through stuff so difficult, like they have difficulties going through things, but I go through things easily, 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 easily. When I was younger, guys, I, I, I had this thing that I give. I think that's one thing that I learned from my grandmother. She always give. She doesn't have, but if we have, oh, go give this to this person. Because the person she's asking me to give to, to send the thing to, it's more needy than us. Go give this to this person. Now go. Go give this thing to this person. I go. So that's where I learned giving from. You don't have to be a multi-billionaire because my grandmother was not rich, but she was always giving. She wasn't rich, but she was always giving. And sometimes... I remember when I was, I was in Ghana, I walked into a place and I get favors. Somebody would just see me. Oh, you're so beautiful. What do you want? And so I want to do this passport. I want to do this. Okay, don't worry. They, they sit down. Let me help you. So they do it for me free. So sometimes I, 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 passed, I bypass processes. I bypass processes. Just favor. Start locating you. Whatever you do today, your children will rip it. If you don't rip it, your children will rip it. So please. Let's, let's try and give during this time that we are fasting, we are praying. If you want a Bible verse to support what I'm saying, please read Isaiah 58. Read the whole chapter. You understand the importance of giving when you are fasting. Please, Isaiah 50, 58, read that chapter and you see that giving is very important when you are fasting. Okay? Um. Well said, Jenny. Yes, I have statistics exams tomorrow. Please remember me in your prayers. Success is yours. You pass in Jesus' name. You pass in Jesus' name. You pass in Jesus' name. What retentive memory, retentive memory, whatever you, you've learned, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. <laughs> you want to reap yourself, you reap it yourself. Amen. And your children and your generation to come will reap it too. <laughs> <laughs> guys <laughs> you've been here for 32 minutes <laughs> okay <laughs> anything else to say or do you have any, any more things to say okay the memory of just is pledged okay right um i think some people are still joining sir. okay guys I'll leave you to it, unless, of course, somebody's got a question. Please do ask. Do ask. I should tell you more. What do you want to hear? Nana, what do you want to hear? Say it. Let me tell you. Ideally, I don't want the video to be so long. If it's so long, other people will not watch it. Nana, what do you want to know? Okay. Guys, I hope you're all making note of your dreams. Your dreams. Your dreams are a way of God speaking to you during this important fasting period. God will reveal things to you. Then you start praying against it or you pray to get those things. Okay? So your dreams are very important. When you wake up, you pray. You write them down which is very important. Write your dreams down. It's very import important. Okay. Jenny is saying if it's good and interesting, they'll they watch it. Yeah, they'll watch it. Okay, that's fine. So what do we talk about now? <laughs> I, me, the giving part is so important for me. The giving part, right? Like I said, we don't have to be the rich and famous before we start blessing people or start helping up um, generation or people. In society, the little we have, we can. Hey, no, no, don't do that. Oh, please write your dreams down. Eh? It's very important. When you write your dreams down, it always reflects one day. So on this day, I had this dream. Now you have another one. Then it will link up. It will make sense. 
Never ignore your dreams. Write your dreams down. Get a, do, um, write it out as a journal. Write your dreams down. Every time you have a dream, write it down. Every dream has a meaning. Like I keep saying, anything that we are going to spiritually, it has already manifested. Esther, thank you. Thank you. And I pray that God give you strength to do your fast too. Because I know the fast is very important. Please go to your prayer. You dream every day. Write them down. Okay? Yeah. Every dream has got a meaning. Every single dream has got a meaning. And they're all revelations. Things that God is revealing to you. You, you don't, don't don't underestimate your dream because dreams are very powerful, very very powerful. Because sometimes like, I, there was a time, right? I have a dream. I have a dream, right? I see myself at a certain place. I've never been there before. Then I walk into an environment. Then I walk. Around, I will look around. And say, ah, I've been to this. I've seen this place before. I've seen this environment before. There was a time I was going for an interview at a Grace Inn in the city, London City. Then when I got into the office, when I look at the surrounding of the office, I said, oh God, I've been here before. But I've never physically been in this office before. But in my dream, I've seen this office before. I've been in this office office before in my dream. Then I just looked wrong again. I saw... If, um, a flower, this artificial flowers for decoration. I said, no, 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 no. I was convinced I've seen this thing in my dream before. I've seen this location in my dream before. When I came back, they gave me the job. I came back to read out the, the dream, what I saw. I said, no, I don't want to go to that place. I don't want to go to that place. And I, never, I didn't accept that job. I didn't accept that job. Because it didn't make sense to me that that same location, I saw it in my dreams. And... I was invited for an interview in the same location. I said, no, there's something going on. And it transpired that that area, hey, all the witches, that is their location. That is their meeting point. I don't want to go to where that they will su suppress my, my shine. I think well of water is good, you know. A well of water. I think, uh, you know, when the story where the... Um, Jesus asked a Samaria woman to give her water. Yeah, well of water is a good one. I think it's blessing or abundance. You know, a well always um, brings out water. So it's, a, it's an abundance. Trust me. Seeing a well in a dream is an abundance. So you need to pray that abundance come in your way. Because well always, um, I wish I had my, one of my children here. You were explaining to me. The, the, the water comes out by itself. The well of water is a good dream. It's a good dream. Trust me. Monique, thank you for joining the live stream. Um, and first time. Oh, thank you for joining. Don't forget to subscribe. So anytime I come live, you can join my live stream. So we, we have a chat together. Okay. I'm just trying to learn how to put that link there that I can invite people on that we can chat face to face. Right, I'll try and learn how to do it this weekend. So the next chat, um, live stream, I can put the link there. You can click on it, then we chat face to face. I would love to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, dreams are symbolic too. So um, the lady who said she saw a well, please pray. Your specific prayer is God give me abundance because a well always bring abundance. Because a well, you don't have to put water in; it brings abundance. Abundance itself abundance that is a sign of abundance when you see well because it, it, the well always fills itself up that's a source of water and water means many things you love to join okay okay you i know you love to join <laughs> nana <laughs> you i know you love to join <laughs> so I, I will try and fix that so we all join i'm so happy for you because that um well of water is, is, a, is a good dream i'm so happy for you pray that god let there be a manifestation of abundance in my life. Abundance of everything, anything I do. Let there be riches. Let there be prosperity, breakthrough, opportunities, 
business opportunity, career opportunity, and growth, spiritual growth. That is very important. Spiritual growth is very important too. Okay? Right. Uh, yes, I am fully Ghanaian, proud Ghanaian woman, an Ewe and a Ghan woman. Okay? I am Ghanaian. I'm surprised people ask that question, you know, because the way I speak is so... I think I give it out when I speak. Do you do online done prayers? No, I don't. No, no, I don't do online prayers. Hey, you know one thing? I've got a lot of Ghanaians who are supporting me on this channel, which is so lovely, though. Because um, Cindy is Ghanaian. SH is Ghanaian. Uh, Lifestyle by RNA is Ghanaian. Yeah, my last name. That's my father's name. I'm not using my husband's name. Oh, you joined for the first time. Highly favored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I know it's, it's difficult for people to join. So when somebody joins, I do appreciate the person. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Carl from Mombasa. You know what? This YouTube channel has given me so much um, knowledge or enlightenment. I never knew Kenyans are so God lovely or God loving until I started this YouTube channel. If I could show you this, Kenyans and South Africans are number two and three most watched countries. The, the most watched country is United States and South Africa second, Kenya third. Sometimes Kenya is second, South Africa third. I didn't know that Kenyans are so into Christ like that, which is so good. See, knowledge is power. I didn't know Kenyans are God loving that they love God that much. Um, see, this thing is not working. I'm trying to show you if only you can see it. Engagement. Mm. I don't know whether you can see. Guys, can you see this? Can you see my stats? See, United States, South Africa, Kenya, United Kingdom, Nigeria. I didn't know Kenyans are this crazy about God. I didn't know. I didn't know at all until I started this YouTube channel. And I said, oh my God. Sometimes you just, you just have to seek knowledge. That's why they say knowledge is power. Knowledge is so much power. Oh, my dear. Hmm. It's only Ghanaians in diaspora that watches me, you know. <laughs> Ghanaians don't watch me from Ghana. <laughs> Zambia, Zambia also watches. They watch it there, like, like when you come down, down, down. This switch, okay. Esther says, I dreamt that I crossed a sun, the sands of time, a desert. A desert means dryness. If you cross a desert, it te technically means you have overcome hardship. Because desert, there's no life in, in the desert. So if you crossed a desert, it means you have overcome hardship. You cross it over. Hey, <laughs> somebody just proved me wrong. <laughs> I'm in Ghana watching you, sis. I, I'm sorry. My chin is so off. Watch me. Crossing a desert is a good dream. It means you've crossed over hardship. You've crossed over difficulties. Because you and I know there's no life in the desert. So if you've crossed over, it's a good dream. So you need to pray for God for restoration and abundance. Restoration and abundance, right? Guys, there is something that I do personally, right? I don't know because it's my personality. In Ghana, we say, I don't know how to say it in English. For those of you who understand, please write it there. The, the uh, Nana... RNA, write the meaning of Miniadin down there for me, please. You are my PA now. I 
I don't take no for an answer. If I want something, I want it. So if I want something from God, God, if this thing I want it, please, I want it. And whatever I need to do to get it spiritually, I'll get it. If I need to fast, ah, hardcore girl, yes. Thank you. See, Nana is a journalist, so she understands it. If I want something, I want it. If I say, God, I want this. Hey, Dora from Cameroon, welcome for joining the live stream. Oh, you encourage my testimonies, my God. Thank you, thank you. It's all the work of God. It's God that is taking us through. God that is, is showing himself. God that is manifesting his power, right? If I, what I do is that if I, I know, okay. I know spiritual things, right? I believe that there is nothing for free. That is why I'm so hooked onto fasting. Because in the Bible, from the book of Genesis, right, to the book of Revelation, I've never seen or read or heard any story where somebody has been in the presence of God, eh? and they've prayed, they fasted, and God has ever failed them. So I use that as a point, that point of contact to God. And if I'm in need, I said, God, when this person needed this, they fasted, they prayed, and they gave something for your glory and whatever they needed manifested. Let me use the story of Hannah. When Hannah needed a baby, she was constantly going to the, the house of God, the synagogue at the time. She was there crying, crying until the priest even said, is this, ma this woman is drunk of wine. She said, me, drunk of wine. I am mad for God. I want a child. So if you want something, it is your enthusiasm. Your charisma can also push you. So if we are going to a certain place, also like I'm shy, I'm shy, I'm shy. Me, I'm not shy, yo. Me the many to say him, and I walk boldly to that place, and I, I speak softly, I humble myself and speak softly, and I get what I want from you. And if I get it, I say thank you, God. There, me na me corner, I'm gone. Yes, Ajoa. I'm not perfect though, but we're all learning along. You learn from me, I learn from you. Okay? I'm not perfect. We all learn from each other. Okay? So I'm glad that you found this channel and I pray that whatever God is got in store for you, you find it here. Or whatever God is planned for you, God will reveal it to you. Okay? Yeah. So as I was saying, you need always need to give something. You know when... um. Tears are powerful. Yes, in the presence of God, in the altar of God. Let's look at uh, Abraham. When Abraham needed a he needed a child, his wife, Sarah, they waited, 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 waited. It wasn't coming. Finally, when he came, God tested him, said, use your son as a sacrifice for me. Can you imagine that? Me, I can't do it all. I'm going to be honest. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, he listened to God. God tested him. When he went, he was going to do it. And God said, no. That is the lamb there. Use the lamb instead. The goodness that Abraham did. Guys, I live in a Jewish area. I can even, if I, if I, I can't move this. If I show you the houses here, he said, you'll be the father of many nations. If you see the Jewish people's houses here, my, my dear, if they open their doors, I say, Jesus Christ, me, they may go die him far. Eh? My, my forefathers evil doing. I asked myself, where, where did I go to sleep? That, I mean, I have to, everything has to be hard way for me. The blessings of Abraham, his generation, I live with them on these streets. Everywhere around here is the uh, Jewish people, right? If you see their assets, if you see their businesses around, you say yes. You will say yes. So there's nothing for free. If you sow something in the house of God, if you sacrifice you will reap it. Now, I know people don't want to sow anything in the house of God because they say pastors are using the money on lovely things. My dear, be your own pastor. Whatever money you have, go out there. Somebody is dying of hunger. Somebody needs money to buy medicine. Somebody needs money to buy clothes, pay school fees, do things. It can bless somebody. Let God lead you. Let God lead you. Let God lead you to a person that needs you. If you don't want to give to church, I agree. Because sometimes you ask yourself, hey, 
It's not small. See, pastors, they are blessed. Yes, this Jewish people, Jewish people are blessed. So, evidently, I said, I live with them here. I live with them. The, the, you know, on Fridays, they don't touch electronic gadgets. So if I'm walking past, they'll call me, Miss, Miss, can you help me, please? And I say, when I moved to this area, I was being nasty to them. God forgive me. Why are you calling me? Do I look like your maid that should come and do th things for you in your house? He said, oh, please, I need you to help me. My alarm is gone off, but it's electronic. I cannot touch it. And I said, why can you not touch it? Is it not your own house? Then they look at me. And I came to tell my husband that this Jewish man, number 14, telling me that I should come and switch off his, um, his alarm for him. So, babe, did you do it? I said, I didn't do it. Oh, what did you do that? Because he, he has not alarm. I said, okay. So why do you have to um, live in a house without not able, being able to touch it? Oh, so from that day, when I'm walking past and they call me, Miss, can you please help me? I go into the house and I do whatever they want done. And if you see interior deco, hey, if you see interior deco, Jewish are blessed, no doubt. The blessings of Abraham, it will run on from generation to generation to generation to generation. It will run from generation to generation to generation to generation. It will run from generation to generation. You can't stop it because they are blessed. God has blessed them and that's it. You cannot reverse their blessing. The, the, the Bible says what God has blessed, nobody can reverse it. What God has blessed, nobody can reverse it. Oh, Okay, when it comes to baptism, I would prefer you do immersion, emission, right? Emission. Do baptism of emission. Find a church where they do baptism of emission. It's normally done in the summertime in the UK. It's, I know you are in UK, so it's normally done in the summertime. Please find a Bible-believing church that can do it for her. They mess her into water. I don't want the calic one that we were we were we did when we were younger. No, find a church, a Bible believing church, who um, who does baptism by immersion. They immerse the person into a river or a running water, right? Do that one for her, and it's a good sign that she wants to be baptized. The Holy Spirit will baptize her, and she will be a light, a light upon the family. You see that, you see a massive change in her. She'll be the light for the family. God, oh, where I know I'm no longer having connection with them. There's so much division in that church. I don't want you to go to that toxicity. I don't want you to go to that toxic place. But I have your contact. So if I think of something else, if I know about another one, I'll, I'll give you a WhatsApp message. Okay, Jenny, I'll give you a WhatsApp message when I know about any. I'll, I'll do that. Okay, guys, um, I think it's almost an hour now. So, uh, I'm tired, you know. Tomorrow, I've got London. Tomorrow, I've got class. I don't know what module we are doing tomorrow. I've got class tomorrow and Saturday, the whole day, Saturday. I've got class from 6.30 in the evening to 9 o'clock or 9.30. Then the continuation will start from 4.00. For, um, from 9 a.m. on Saturday to 4 p.m. to finish the module up. I'm trying to know everything about Christ, know everything about um, theology. It's going to be two years. Yeah, it's a two years thing that I'm doing. So I pray that if what God wants me to do, God reveals himself to me. He helps me through it and everything goes on smoothly. Right? But I'm praying for the anointing of the prophetic. That's what I love. Eee! I just want to just go speaking to me instantly. This person, this, 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 this. I, somebody told me, because you are so desperate, that is why God is not giving it to you. I said, nah, I want this prophetic thing, man. I love it. I love it. The way they can tell you everything. But everything that God speaks to me is in the dream. It's in the dream. I don't want a dream. I want life. <laughs> I want life, but nobody can stop the will of God. God reveals everything to me in a dream. And 99% of them happens. 
spirit husbands. I think I've got a video there. Spirit husband, you need to be praying against it. There are a lot of things that we do to bring it back to ourselves, you know. If you are not married, then you need to try not have intimacy with any man if you want it to stop. I know it's hard, but excuse me. If you are not married, you don't you need to stop having any intimacy with a man. And you start praying against that spirit. In your prayers, you divorce them. You tell that spirit, because every spirit is called ears, because they're all around. You tell them, I did not consent to you, so I divorce you with the blood of Jesus. I divorce you with the blood of Jesus. I have no connection with you. I did not consent to you, so I divorce you with the power and the might of, of God. By the power that resurrected Christ from death, you, that spirit, spiritual married in, I divorce you. I detach myself from you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right, just keep doing that. Okay, if you're not married, the hard thing is you can't have intimacy with a man until you're properly married. And if you don't try to break it, I'm telling you from experience, if you don't try to break it, it will it will damage your marriage. It will damage your marriage. It will bring you problems, problems, problems. One 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 problem from the other, you try to solve, it, and another one comes again. That spiritual husband thing is so demonic, unbelievable. It's so demonic. So try and break it before you even get into marriage. And if you know a pastor that is good with spiritual things, listen, I know a lot of people are here, 21 people. I, I respect you. I love you. And you are a lot. In another person's platform, 21 people is not me. I love it. I appreciate you guys. Please Try find Pastor Udro. I don't know where you live. If you are in Ghana, Pastor Udro. Hmm? Pastor Udro. Kofi Udro. Tie. Ye tie. Pastor Udro. Try going to find a way of going to Pastor Udro. I think he does service at um, Achimota Forest. So find a way. Oh, you're in Cameroon. Oh, that's far. Okay, anytime you come to Ghana or anytime you go to Ghana, try Trace Pataudro. He, I can vouch that he's a very good spiritual man. He can pray for you to deliver you from that spirit. Because if you don't stop him, my darling, it's going to damage your future marriage. It will damage you because that rivalry will be there. It will be causing the man to torture you or it will make you always be fighting the man until the man leaves. Until the man leaves. Oh, your church is what break yoking ministry. Um, Nana, she she's not in um she's not in uh, Ghana. She's in Cameroon. Okay. Right, if you read what um, Chris is, Chris is saying, Chris is, I can't even remember if I pronounce your name, sorry, is saying, if you're led by the spirits, then it's true. It's true. I really have to go to the My daughter wants to come here. I think I've left her for too long. Um, you can send me an email. Yeah, I've dropped my email there. So if you want to send me an email, you can do so. Guys, if you're on here, please do like the video. And if, if not, you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel so you can help me grow. And if you like my content, please share it on. Because that's the only way I can, I can get your attention and grow. Right? Okay. Guys, thank you very much. Um, God bless you all. God protect you. 
tomorrow is day 12. I pray that God gives each and everyone strength so we can do this fast to the end. And the most important thing, I want you to have testimony because when you have testimony, it will encourage you to trust and believe God more. See, it will encourage you to trust and believe God more. I say, what have you been trying to do wrong? Okay, guys, it's, it's enough. I need to be disciplined. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. Um, there is something I want to encourage you on about delay. I don't know whether I should come on tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow, Friday, people go to church. We go to places. So I'm not sure if delay, if, if there is a delay, it doesn't mean there's a denial. Okay, guys, my daughter is calling up for me. I think she needs help. So shalom, everyone. I love you to beat. May the Lord bless you. God lift you up. God give you strength to finish your fast. And I want signs and wonder miracles, signs and wonder miracles to locate you. Testimony be your portion. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm coming, baby. I just turned the poop and no.